Hi, welcome to this part 16. Here we are looking at some of the real certification questions for AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Exam, all real questions. We will cover questions linked with these three topics in this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. For previous questions, please refer the previous parts of this playlist. All questions are still valid. Chances of same or similar question coming in the exam is very high. Let's jump into this question. See, you as a customer want to move from on-prem to AWS cloud. Okay, simple. Someone is moving from on-prem to AWS. They want to know wh what would be the cost reduction. What will you use out of this? See, it is simple. You will use calculator. Whenever it's common sense, if anybody wants to know, like when you are moving from one house to other, you're buying a new house. So what are you going to do? You will use a calculator like how much it will cost you will put the per square feet rate and the total number of square feet and you will come to know this will be the cost of the flat simple here also same you have to use a calculator okay calculator is gives you total cost of ownership see you do not require ownership just for your ec2 instance or just for your database you require it for everything right you are moving from on-prem you have you may have multiple databases multiple ec2 instances maybe active directory users so basically you want to know the cost of everything like when you are buying a flat you want you don't only want to know the cost of the drawing room you want to know the cost of entire flat maybe four bedrooms uh, bathrooms balcony kitchen lobby parking lot if you have multiple cars then multiple parking lot cost so this is my answer okay so you can use this pricing tool and you can you know calculate the price so there is something called migration evaluator so this is something which we can also use in this context you know see budget and cost explorer it is all to do with after you are on premises after 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 then how you can control your cost does the question talk about after no it is talking before 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 because it is wanting potential cost reductions so a and b both are wrong both are for after tco is for before before you move in the flat you want to know the cost of the flat aws budget is what after you move inside the flat you are trying to control your operating costs and d well architected to, so this is to review your architecture and adopt best practices so basically if you want architectural guidance like you are building your bungalow you want to know the best practice how much deep should i dig so that i can put the pillars these are all architectural guidance you would not use calculator for that right you will ask an architect same thing here if you just want to know cost then why to use this tool this is the tool which will give you best practices from laying down that architecture what is how many pillars you should put how many uh, from a roof standpoint what kind of concrete you should use those kind of designs so this is my final answer let's jump to the next question see here we have to choose two answers see there are two vpcs okay this one and this one you want to establish a network connection between these two what should you use out of these options which two things you should use see simple the first thing is what is there there are two vpcs so what will you use you will use vpc pairing first thing See, this will help you pair two VPCs. That is what we require. And this is the most cost effective way of communication. If you see here, VPC pairing connection is a networking connection between two VPCs that enables you to route traffic between them using private addresses, not public, private addresses. So we got our first answer. See, direct connect. Let's look at this direct connect. If you want to connect your on-premises to cloud network, you want to create a dedicated network connection to AWS, then you use direct connect, simple. So this is your data center here. This is your direct connect. 
and this is your AWS region. Do you have this requirement in this question? No. There is no way people are talking about on-premises. They are only talking about two VPCs. So D is wrong. Let's look at route 53. See, if you want to route people to internet applications, then you should use route 53. See, imagine godaddy.com. You want to host your own website. In that case, you use godaddy.com or something like a route 53, which is a DNS web service. There is no requirement here to host your applications and etc. It is just talking about connecting two VPCs. So B is wrong. Let's look at A, VPC endpoints. See, this VPC endpoint will only communicate with uh, resources in your own VPC, originating from your own VPC, not from other VPC. And transit gate gateway, if you see, it can easily connect VPCs, AWS accounts, on-premises networks, anything. So we have to connect VPCs, like two VPCs. So this is good. So A is wrong and E is the right answer. So this would be my final answer. Let's look at this question. Which of the following is a recommended method for setting IAM user policies? So the first one says, it says that you first give all permissions, okay? And then you remove the permissions that are not required, okay? So that he can hack your system, he can play around with your system, he can abuse the data, okay? Crap option, okay? So A is wrong. B says use Amazon managed policies only. No boss, you can create your own custom policies also. There is no hard and fast rule with IAM user policies that you should use managed policies. C says you give minimum set of permissions and grant additional permissions as necessary. This is the best, you know, this is the best practice also. See, whenever you are giving any person an access, for example, consider you're giving someone keys to your flat. Will you also give them keys to your bedroom or keys to your locker inside the bedroom will you give all and then re and then see oh he is just using the drawing room not the bedroom not the locker so let me take those keys back see you will only give the keys for the role that is intended if you have a cook coming in you will give the keys of the flat where the key where she can operate in the kitchen you will not give her your bedroom keys simple so least privilege she has to cook so only give her keys to the kitchen okay similarly here c is right because you start with minimum privilege minimum means whatever they are supposed to do and later you see you need additional permissions what can be example of additional permissions the cook now is also your a caretaker who has to broom and vacuum your uh, bedrooms so she will now need bedroom keys also to vacuum your bedroom let's look at d it says attach policies directly to each user individually see policies you will never attach to a user policies are attached to a role not a user that, that is not the best practice it is not a recommended method so this is wrong so this is my final answer it is as per the best practice. So please hit the subscribe and the like button. It keeps me motivated to put some more contents which are informative in nature. This brings us to the end of part 16. We covered real questions related to these topics. Do not forget to visit each and every video of this playlist. The questions are still relevant and real. See you in the next part.